Welcome to another episode of my new AM2R tutorial series where I teach you how to become a pro player. In this episode, I'll be teaching you how to quickly kill bosses with some tips, tricks, and setups. Without further ado, let's get right into it. The very first boss fight you encounter is when you're making your way out of Golden Temple, the Ancient Guardian. It has several attacks, a quick blue laser which can be dodged by moving away from under it, a set of 6 purple fireballs which can be dodged by either crouching or morphing into a ball. 6 green fireballs that impact the ground can be dodged by staying under it. And a yellow fireball that spreads a wave of fire across the ground can be dodged by timing your jump right. To dispose of it quickly, aim upwards while using the aim lock feature so we can move around while aiming up at the same time. The Ancient Guardian is easily destroyed by missiles. If you're playing a randomizer, Ancient Guardian can be damaged by supers and power bombs. If you're lucky and got speed booster early in Golden Temple, you can opt for a shine spark for an instant kill. Next up, we have the optional boss in Hydro Station, Arachnus. It can launch fireballs at you or its slashing attacks from fusion. These attacks increase in difficulty after each phase. It can also curl into a ball, go midair, and launch itself at you. After dealing enough damage, it will curl into a ball and begin to ram into you. Place bombs to launch it into the spikes on the walls. If you fail, it will uncurl and launch purple fireballs at you. Use Missile Spam to end its phases quickly. You can place bombs in such a way to launch it into the spikes in one move. Alternatively, you can place 3 power bombs to eliminate it quickly. Place one power bomb as soon as the statue begins to crack. Place the other two after one another and Arachnus is as good as dead. Now, we have the boss that's notorious for being really difficult for casual players, Torizo. It has two phases. During the first phase, it will walk towards you for a bit, then perform either one or three attacks. The first attack is when it performs four energy waves that curves. The second is when it jumps back while spitting fireballs at you, then perform the energy waves. Lastly, we have the most ideal attack, the speed attack, where he spits a bunch of fireballs at you, which is ideal since you can get refills from them. It will also get faster the more damage it takes. Now, we enter the second phase where it starts to grow wings and fly. While flying around the arena, it can spit more fireballs at you, which once again is ideal because refills. After sustaining enough damage, it will fly off screen and start bomb diving you 4 times. It can also spawn in multiple mechanical birds. This attack is also ideal as it provides refills on ammo and health. To begin, pick the item presented on its arm. It will start to rise from the Chozo statue and while this is happening, aim diagonally up and hold the aim lock button. Once it is fully standing, wait for a split second before blasting it away with missiles. If you ever find yourself in a situation where you're backed up in a corner, you can roll under it using Morph Mode. In this phase, there are several ways to handle these attacks. For this attack, crouch, aim diagonally up, and spam your beam on missiles. When it is dive bombing you, you can get shots in with missiles like so. You can also opt to use Morph Ball Bombs here if you ran out of missiles, 
or maybe even a combination of the two. For the flying birds, use your beam or missiles to get rid of them. You can manipulate the positioning of Teresa's attack so that it lines up with your aim for missile spamming. At the beginning of this phase, Teresa will most likely perform its fireball attack after sustaining a certain amount of damage. Make sure you get Teresa as close as possible to a wall before it does said attack. After dive bombing you for the first time, it will most likely spawn in flying birds. Make sure Teresa is at the middle of the arena before this happens. With everything I just mentioned, the setup for Teresa is pretty straightforward. During its first phase, spam missiles and ideally you will want to end the fight at the very right side of the arena. During its second phase, manipulate its attack so you deal as much damage as possible in a short amount of time. Get cheap shots in while it's bomb diving you. If you're playing a randomizer and got some upgrades early, you can use supers and power bombs during both its phases. During the escape sequence in Reactor, you run into a chosen mechanism called Tank Prototype. It moves at you at a very slow pace. It shoots missiles and beam projectiles at you. The beam projectiles come in three variations, plasma beam, wave beam, and ice beam. You can destroy the chest plate to reveal its true weak spot. You can destroy its base to stop it from moving, its arm to stop the beam projectiles, and its head to disrupt its aim. You can damage all three of these areas with your beam weapon, missiles, supers, and power bombs. The setup for this requires precise aim, but it's pretty straightforward. Aim diagonally at its chest with aim lock and spam missiles or supers while moving back slightly. You're guaranteed to get hit here, so it's just a matter of how good you are at readjusting your aim. Next up, we have the bullet hell, the duster. It uses your own weaponry against you, like screw attack, ice, wave, spacer, and plasma beam. It is covered by four yellow plates which are resistant to your beam weapons. The green interior shield can be disabled using your beam weaponry. Finally, the core itself is not resistant to any of your weapons. To kill the tester fast, you can tank the damage and use the iframes to hit the interior shield. After it is disabled, place a power bomb. In randomizers, plasma beam goes through the yellow plates and straight to the interior shield. After it is disabled, once again, place a power bomb. Be careful about your power bomb placement because it might go off while tester is already far away and it will not do enough damage to one shot the tester. Next, we have the creature that lurks in the shadows, Genesis. This creature will crawl around the ceiling and after a few seconds it will jump down and do either one of two attacks. A slash if you're close and an acid spit if you're far away. Genesis is weak to all types of firepower at all times. The quick kill setup for this boss is my favorite. Once the door locks, go to the spot, crouch, and aim to the left. Once Genesis jumps down, shoot two supers at it. Use space jump to get over to the other side and while Mira, shoot another super downwards. Once on the other side, crouch and, and shoot another super. By now, Genesis will go up to the ceiling. Use space and high jump to shoot 3 supers at it like so. Next, go to the ground and hit another super while it's on the ceiling. Then, go left as soon as Genesis is about to jump down. Unmorph and shoot one last super.
You can also go for an easier strat if that was too much for your fingers. If at all possible, try not to use power bombs since it gives Genesis longer iframes. Next up on our list, we have the fastest animal on SR388, Ceres. It swims around the room at a decent speed and uses the six pipes located at the walls to travel around the arena. The skin on its underside can be frozen with ice beam and attacked by any type of missiles to nullify its hardened skin and render it vulnerable to all kinds of attacks. After Ceres sustains enough damage, Ceres will begin speed boosting at a higher speed around the room. The pipes it uses to travel around the arena can be shot at with missiles to electrocute it. When Ceres enters or exits via an electrocuted pipe, it takes damage. This is useful mainly to end the speed boosting phase quickly, but to use this effectively, you have to know Ceres travel patterns. So I'm gonna be teaching you Ceres movement patterns here. Uh, sorry for the low quality image. Uh, but yeah, basically, when Ceres is not speed boosting, he has three patterns. One is when he goes like this, across the screen. Cyrus can do this uh, starting from both sides, either this side or this side. Either way, you would need to know that if Cyrus comes from this pipe, you need to electrocute this pipe. If Cyrus comes from out from this pipe, electro electrocute this. The next pattern he has, uh, which he does at the start of the round, is this. He flies up here and go back to the same pipe. Uh, he does this at the beginning of the round. You know that oh, if Cyrus comes up, comes up from like this, then it'll actually keep this pipe. Uh, Cyrus can also do this on the other side, like this, like this as well. Another pattern Cyrus has is when Cyrus comes. Um, comes out from the very bottom so if if Cyrus is doing the spinning thing you can aim your beam uh, diagonally downwards like ice beam and deals like a lot of damage if you have plasma because uh, a lot of the hitbox are gathered here and here as well basically every single pattern Cyrus has Cyrus can do it from either the left or the right and you should know that, oh, if Cyrus comes out from the bottom here, you should electrocute this pipe. So if Cyrus goes up here, boom, he gets it. Now we move on to the uh, the speed boosting phase patterns. The first thing that Cyrus can do is a pattern where he goes up like this and then downwards. So if you see Cyrus goes up like this, then you know, oh, sh oh it's doing that pattern. It's doing this pattern. So if Cyrus comes out from this side, then you gotta electrocute this pipe. As the same thing goes for the other side. If Cyrus comes out from this, electrocute this. Another pattern Cyrus has is when he does, he comes out from the middle pipe and he swims around the middle area like three times. And every time he does, he will throw like an ice block, like a chunk of ice at you. Uh, ideally, you do not want this to happen. It takes a while uh, to complete this uh, pattern. So the last pattern Cyrus can do uh, is a pattern where he does something like this, like a zigzag pattern. And this pattern is actually also ideal because uh, you can tell straight away that oh Cyrus is doing this pattern therefore uh, I must electrocute this pipe and so if Cyrus comes up from this you know oh I gotta electrocute this pipe and that's basically all of Cyrus patterns 
Finally, we have the mother of all Metroids. Your mom. I, I mean the Queen Metroid. Using her long neck, she will ram into you with her head. After doing that a few times, she will launch a number of crystals from her, from her mouth, which can be destroyed for refills. Her weak spot, her head, is vulnerable to missiles, supers, and regular bombs. She is completely immune to power bombs. After she has taken enough damage, she will charge up a fireball in her mouth and then launch it at the wall behind you, destroying it and extending her chamber, which repeats up to 4 times. During the 4th phase, she will have a new attack where she spits out acid before launching crystals at you. The setup is pretty straightforward, aim dangling up, spam missiles, and occasionally jump. When she launches her crystals, aim up and wait until they all group together, then shoot. This will ensure that the refills drop on you. For the second and third phase, stay at the door, spam missiles, and jump on occasion. For the fourth phase, use aim lock to move back and forth while spamming miss missiles. Lastly, finish off the queen however you wish. That's it! That's all there is for the bosses. Now let's recap everything we just learned. Use aim lock and missile spam for Guardian, Arachnus, and Prototype Tank. Missile spam the first phase of the Theresa fight then manipulate its attacks in the second phase so you can get as much damage in as possible. You can use the iframes or plasma beam to disable Tester's interior shield and one-shot it using a power bomb. Use your movement skills to hit Genesis from all angles to finish him off quickly. Take advantage of the travel patterns to maximize damage while fighting Ceres. Use aim lock and missile spam to finish the Queen Metroid swiftly. That's it for the video. I hope this will help you fellow hunters out there tackle AM to our bosses more effectively in the future. I'll see you hunters on episode 3 where I'll be teaching you general movement techniques and beginner level shine spot chains. Until then, goodbye!